Okay, in this scene, we're going to talk about the class 1C antiarrhythmics, and it's going to be taking place at C. So C for C. And the foe over here is the shark with the gun. We'll call him the gun C. Gun Z for 1C. And he also tremendously dislikes arithmetic. And that's why he's hijacking this arithmetic class over here. So he's anti-arithmetic for anti-arithmic. And the reason why it's taking place in this classroom that takes place at C is to help us remember the class. So again, class 1C anti-arithmics. So common class 1C anti-arithmics include flacanine and procathinone. And how do we remember that? Well, let's take a look at this evil shark over here. We see that there's this flake, this snowflake, who is also a knight that's riding on his back. So the flake, that's a knight, for flacanide. And we also note this nun over here who has the propellers. She's the propeller nun. Propeller nun for propafenone. Okay, so how do class 1C antiarrhythmics work? Well, let's take a look at this TV. The classroom, for some reason, always has this TV on with the sodium channel on. They love the sodium channel. And over here at the sea, on the sodium channel episode today, the salt is very strong. And it's being exploded. It's being blocked. This helps us remember strong sodium channel blockade. Class 1C antiarrhythmics work as strong sodium channel blockers. And by doing so, they significantly prolong the effective refractory period in the AV node and the accessory bypass tracks. And that's why if you take a look at this squishy heart model over here that they have in their classroom, we have the air vehicle over here. Air vehicle in the AV node to remind us of the AV node. AV stands for air vehicle as well as for AV node. It has no effect on the effective refractory period in the Purkinje and ventricular tissue. On this graph over here, we see the dramatic decrease in slope at phase zero, and this is reflective of the extreme strength of the class 1Cs. And just as a side point, on EKG they can cause a long QRS, but they do not prolong the QT. And being strong, they're the most likely of the antiarrhythmics to cause arrhythmias, and that's why they're only really used in the case of SVTs, supraventricular tachycardia, and in cases as a last resort in refractory ventricular tachycardia. And this brings us to our adverse effects. Behind over here, we see this shark over here who's stuck. This shark actually has a heart. We'll call the myocardium by his shin. He has myocardium by his shins. I don't know why he has shins, he's a shark. But this is the myocardium in the shark's shin. Myocardium in the shark's shin reminds us of myocardial infarction. Class 1C antiarrhythmics should not be used after a myocardial infarction because they're pro-arrhythmic. And more generally, they're contricated in structural and ischemic heart disease. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the antiarrhythmics. Take care.